What is the ultimate proof that a person is who they say they are? Well, that's what we're going to discuss as we continue our study in the Gospel of John today. Hi, I'm Pastor Jeremy Bannister of Heights Christian Church, and we're going through the Bible in five years period of time. If it's always been a goal of yours to go through the Word of God, we invite you on this journey with us by clicking subscribe to our channel, clicking the bell for notifications, so that you can receive a devotional much like this one, where we read just a little bit of the Scripture together and pull one thing from it to help us be more like Jesus. Well, the reason I ask this question, you know, what is the ultimate... Uh, what is the ultimate test of, of proving who we are? See, I could say that I'm a lot of things. I could say that I'm a masterful pianist. I can even make business cards that tell other people that I'm a masterful pianist. But the proof as to whether or not I am who I say that I am is sitting down in front of a piano and playing Mozart or Beethoven or, or just any tune that people can come up with their minds. If I am a master pianist, it should be no problem whatsoever. If I'm not a master pianist, well then that illusion is broken very clearly and very easily when I'm set before a piano and maybe all I can do is play the first part of Chopsticks, right? Uh, and you realize, um, can you play anything more complex than that? Nope, that's it. You're definitely not a master pianist. So this is what I think when we come to John chapter 11, and we come to this familiar passage on the death of Lazarus and, and this whole account, I believe wholeheartedly that this is John's ultimate proof. Remember, when we go back to the end from the beginning, as we're doing in our sermon series right now, when we talk about the end from the beginning, it says that the miracles are done to show that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that we may have life in his name, right? These are the things that we're wanting to be able to see. And so as John is laying out these accounts of Jesus's life, this is his ultimate purpose. And I think right here in the middle of the Gospel of John, we're almost at the, you know, we're right at this halfway point. This is where John is saying, here, you know, here is this ultimate earthly proof. The other proof of him rising from the dead himself is, is going to come a little bit later. But the ultimate earthly proof of his claims come right here in John chapter 11. So let's take a look at it together today. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister, and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his, the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. And the disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you. Are you going to go there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, but because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. After saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he's fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they, did, they thought that he meant taking rest and sleep. And Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. And for your sake, I am glad that I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. So Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Now, when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. 
Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. When she said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. And Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he's been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said on this account of the people standing around that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips and his face wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. You know, this account more than any other, I believe, in the Gospel of John is, is leading to this point of saying Jesus is the promised Messiah. You know, and if we look in other chapters, we look at John chapter 5, Jesus says there's going to come a time where the Son of Man, you know, calls in a voice and the dead shall, in Christ shall rise. They're going to hear his voice and raise from the dead because he's given the power you know, to do that. Not only that, but given the power to also lay down his own life and pick it up again. This is the the command that he's received from his father. And so what we see with the death of Lazarus is that we see this connection point between the claims of what he said and him actually doing it. So he goes to Mary, he goes to Martha, and, and he tells his disciples all throughout this that, that this, this death of Lazarus is for the glory of God. Why? So that they may believe. This miracle, this raising of the dead is to show that he has power over death, that he has power to impart life, that he himself is the resurrection. This is the claim that Jesus is verifying by this account. It's the same thing. He said, this is who I say I am. This is what I can do. And now I'm demonstrating this power, just much like a a master uh, pianist, like I talked about at the very beginning. If this were, uh, you know, somebody who could truly play the piano and play it beautifully and play it amazingly well, and they told you, hey, I'm a pianist, I'm a teacher, I'm, I'm somebody who could teach you how to do this, or I'm somebody who is well regarded in this field of music, And he said, well, prove it. The best thing he could do is sit down and play a piece that only a master pianist would be able to do. In the same way, Jesus has been making these claims as we've been reading through the Gospel of John that this is what he can do. And here in chapter 11, he demonstrates his full authority over death. This isn't somebody who's just died. This isn't somebody who's going through a funeral procession maybe 12 hours later, 24 hours later as they've washed the body. This is somebody who's been in the grave for four days. And Jesus bids him to come out and He demonstrates that all of these claims about him are true. You know, when we start looking at the evidence for Jesus, 
we really need to start looking at these claims of healing and resurrection. Because according to the Gospel of John, these miracles are recorded. The things that we're seeing right here are recorded that we might believe. That we might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that we might have life in his name. All throughout this passage, he's reminding them of that hope. Let us remember that hope as we share it to others around us. God bless you. I hope that encourages you this day. And hope that reminds you that these miracles are there for us to be encouraged to realize that Jesus really is who he says he is. God bless you, and we'll talk with you again tomorrow.